Hello, everyone, and welcome back to NetApp On Air. My name is Nick Howell. Thank you so much for joining us for this awesome episode today. I'm very excited to go over uh, our topic for today. Is it's one of those new ones that we uh, a lot of you might not have dipped your toes into just yet, but you're going you're going to learn today. Before we get started today, I absolutely want to get you into our Discord community as it is the place for all technical practitioners and partners and everybody else that uh, might be doing business with NetApp. Want that's where you want to be. That's where all the our support staff hangs out in there. Some of our executives hang out in there. All of our product managers are listening for your feedback. All of that stuff. So make sure you head over to netappdiscord.com and get into our Discord community. Let me put that up on screen here. I'm missing Drew today. Shout out to Drew, uh, who is going to be... It was over uh, recreating his own version of National Lampoon's European Vacation. So, Drew, shout out from us at NetApp On Air. Hope you're having a good time over there. But he's the one that usually pushes the buttons playing Wizard of Oz for me behind the scenes. So I got to do it all today. Uh, but yes, netappdiscord.com is the place to go. Come join us. Come join the community. There's over 5,000 people in there now. Uh, it has grown exponentially over the last year, especially, uh, and we're just we have big plans for it, and we're going to begin integrating it into more and more things that we do. So if you're uh, if you're a technical practitioner, if you're a partner out in the field, uh, if you need to have any questions, if you haven't bought anything NetApp yet, and you just want to ask some questions, come join us. That's the place to find where we hang out. Um, and make sure you subscribe on YouTube, Twitch, all of the place. It's 2024. You guys know how to do this stuff by now. Follow us in all the places that uh, that you like to hang out. We're there. I promise you we're there. And uh, f keep up with all of the content that we have here on NetApp On Air. We do put these events up in Discord as well. So if you're in Discord, you'll have it all there. Uh, my guest today is a special one. He's exhausted, uh, but he's, he's joining us uh, after a, a full week at NVIDIA GTC last week. Um, if you guys happen to catch the keynote, it was packed full, uh, as Jensen does every year with new innovations, new products, new solutions, and new partner uh, announcements, as we had a very large one last week. And today, to go over it, I decided to bring in the expert, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Mike Oglesby. Mike, how you doing, man? Thanks for joining us. Good, man. How you doing? Uh, I'm doing good. I'm excited to talk about this because one of the things I obsess about is I love learning new things. I feel like that the further I get in my career, the less new things that are exciting to me to learn about. But this one I'm very excited to learn about uh, because I don't know much about it, to be honest. I'm an old infrastructure dinosaur uh, for the last 20 to 30 years. So I'm, I'm looking at this going, this is an entirely new wave, new generation of hardware, software, applications, integrations. We, I don't know that we've seen a disruption as big as AI, maybe since virtualization, and I think it has the potential to eclipse that. Is that what you're kind of taking away from some of the stuff from GTC last week? Yeah, I would, I'd equate it more, more in terms of disruption to, honestly, probably mobile. So the just the the advent of mobile, just because it's a totally new application paradigm, and probably our first one since since mobile. So it's we're gonna have so it's a whole new app store. It's a whole new, uh, yeah, I get it. That that's yeah. big. Whole new way of programming. Whole new way of of basically organizing your data, using your data. A whole new way of interacting with computers. So it's. Yeah, it's a big deal. And if if you're looking for uh, new stuff, you should come to the AI space because there's something new like every three days, it seems like. <laughs> well, it's funny. I look at, I see people applying and I see some of the, the job listings that are going around for some of this stuff. And I and I look at, the, I read the job description and go, I, I don't know what any of that stuff is. Yeah. And, I, and I've, I've talked to several people who have come to me asking about roles and things like that. And I, I, I know there's a bunch of free training out there from NVIDIA, from AWS, Microsoft, Google. They all have like free trainings and things like that. Um, I, I just don't know. I don't know what to recommend to people, just being completely transparent and honest, because this is all new to me as well. So I'm very excited about that stuff. Um, very excited to go and take some of these free courses myself and learn some of that. But that's why I lean on the experts like yourself. Uh, to come in and teach us. So last week we had the the new, basically the Blackwell platform uh, get announced. We we've had Ampere and we've had Hopper and we've now we've got Blackwell. 
Um, NetApp has been a part of that with ONTAP AI and other various solutions uh, for a better part of a decade now. If I, I think 2016 is when we launched that, if I'm not that mistaken. Sound, that sounds about right. Yeah, I think that was when the first DGX came out. Yeah. Sometime was, around then. It was a, similar to a FlexPod build in a way where it was just this pre-configured converged solution using DGX instead of um, for compute. Uh, so the, I look at that as a way, but we were the backend storage. So I look at that as a, a first step into this foray that has now become, has now taken over the world, frankly. And I mean, the extent of what I've done at this point is talk to chat GPT copilot and other gen AI, um, sort of, you know, utilities, if you will, I haven't even deep dived into some of the stuff that's doing like video editing, uh, transcription, things like that that are out there and available um, uh, is just it's fascinating to me on the consumer side especially like what's possible now as an end user as a creator all of that stuff we had Hoseb on about a year ago to to go over on tap ai and some of the evolutions um, so if you missed that episode go back and check that out but today i wanted to talk to you specifically about some of the stuff that you said you had some really cool uh, demos and stuff that you were announced um, at GTC last week. Yeah, yeah. So GTC last week was, uh, I think anyone who was there would agree it was it was an exciting week. It was a it was a busy week. It was <laughs> it was a full week. I don't know that I can attend another conference session for a while. But uh, you know, if you saw Jensen's keynote, you saw the the themes of the week, and you also saw how how uh, popular a conference it was. He he filled up the entire SAP Center in San Jose where the Sharks play. So the it, Sharks there, can't even do that right now. No, no. <laughs> so there, there, there were go a lot Kings of go. How's it like? What's it like being in the basement, Sharks? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm a I'm a Canes fan. So I'll throw in my my go, go Canes. But there you go. Looking good for us this year. But yep. yeah, so it was ton of buzz, ton of interest, tons of people there, and the. The interesting thing was this was, so I started going to GTCs in 2019. They were virtual for a while. Now they've gone back in person. So I think this was my sixth GTC, if I'm counting right. And this was the first one where it was almost entirely focused on enterprise AI. So oh. in the past, there's been a lot of a lot of enterprise AI, but also a lot of talk about research and gaming and there was there was still some some research stuff around you know some sessions on that i think jensen touched on a couple things but jensen did not unless i missed it he did not mention gaming once in his keynote it was all about enterprise ai so and the two main themes were so there was the black the new blackwell architecture so that was that was obviously a theme and that thing is that thing is crazy and beyond the realm of my expertise. But the the other theme that kind of permeated the week was a generative AI, of course, but specifically RAG or retrieval augmented generation, which is essentially a way for an enterprise, an organization, anybody really to deploy one of these LLMs like GPT. And they could deploy it behind an API or a chat bot like chat GPT, but then augment it with a knowledge base of their own proprietary internal private data uh, so that it knows stuff that it wouldn't otherwise know. So these models are for the most part trained on the public internet, right? And other public data sources. So they only know what's public. And if you're say a, uh, uh, you know, a big company with a lot of internal work instructions or internal product documentation, it's not going to know any of that stuff. And so something like chat GPT is not going to be super useful, not to mention you don't want to you know, ask sensitive right. questions. To, to You don't to exactly want to copy and paste your source code in there and, and ask it to build some kind of plugin, right? It, exactly. Yeah. Right. You, yeah. You don't want to reveal your all your secrets to open AI. But on top of that, it's just not going to know about your stuff. So right. yeah, RAG is a way for you to augment the knowledge of the model. Uh, the the meta, Meta's Llama 2 models are particularly 
popular for this because they're the Mistral Seven B one is the other one I see all the time. Those are the top two for right now that I see pretty much everywhere. That ever even Nvidia they've got their uh, RTX chat. So if you've got a if you got one of their GPUs in your PC, you can download this. I think it's a hundred gig. You have to download the entire model to your PC, but you can do private chats with your GPU in your consumer PC if if you have one of that. But that's Mistral. Uh, Mistral 2B, Mistral 7B based. Yeah, and the NVIDIA Enterprise RAG package, they've they've pre-packaged a number of models in the, uh, I think there's a few other ones, but for the most part, it's, yeah, it's the Llama 2 models and the, the Mistral models. Those seem to be uh, the most popular at this point in time. So it's, it's you mentioned something about they did, he didn't say gaming one time. That's my legacy with NVIDIA. Like if you had told me 15 years ago that this little graphics card company that puts make, lets me play video games uh, at high resolutions was one day going to be one of the biggest companies in the world and be the... the, the the, that Jensen was going to turn into Miles Dyson and he was going to yeah. be the one that invented basically the, the modern AI or not invented, but you know, the one that brought it to the mainstream in a way. Uh, one of the things that I, I would have told you were crazy, but one of the things I always think about is um, if you look at NVIDIA, they, they were the first ones to create GPUs. They were the first ones to um, really do some of the stuff that we know we kind of take for granted nowadays uh, they're they're just creating new stuff all the time, and it's it's one it's hard to keep up, and two it's I don't know that we've ever seen a company that's that like rawly innovated like just on a on a pure level of just creation of of new stuff. We we constantly see iteration and tweaking and things like that, but I don't know that I've ever seen it. I got to go back to like the Intel's maybe Sun spark. You could give a nod to a hat tip to, but like, Holy smokes, the level of stuff that, and they're doing it every year or every, every other year between yeah, Ampere, Hopper, Blackwell, like it's on an every two year cadence. We're getting these new massive platforms that uh, are just huge. And then at the back half of the year, we get to do the gaming part because every two years, for starting back in 2020, they announced the 3000 series of the RTX GPUs. And alongside that was the Hopper stuff. And then now we're getting the 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 Blackwell stuff where everybody's already saying later this year, we're probably going to get uh, 5000 series NVIDIA RTX GPUs. I, I, almost, I just can't keep up. And I love that, that there's so much creativity and innovation that's coming out of this company. Yeah, they're really pushing the envelope, and especially in the enterprise space, I'd say they're they're unique because it's not just the platforms. They're coming out with with prepackaged foundational models, frameworks, tools, yep, all kinds of stuff. You know, different little pieces that that they've released and are actually supporting as part of their AI enterprise package uh, that'll help you build your own. Uh, your own AI within your company or organization. So yeah, it's crazy. I I've been working with them since 2019, and I can barely keep up. It's what you just mentioned is kind of the crux of our conversation today. So we we hinted at it before, um, but let's say you're a company that has all of this proprietary information, whether it's source code, whether it's decades of KB articles and support uh, support logs. Uh, you've got engineering logs, uh, uh, change logs from different versions of products, and you want to be able to train all of that stuff, yet maintain the sovereignty of it, maintain it privately, internally. That's really what we're here to talk about, because we've got a really compelling solution, um, and it was announced, in, you know, in case you were been sleeping under a rock, it's, it was announced last week at GTC during the keynote, um, that uh, apparently, according to Jensen, we were the we were the best NAS company. I, I forget his exact words, but he said something. Of, we we own half the world's files. I, yeah, I believe he said half of all the world's files reside on on NetApp. So I, Whew. yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of files. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we're here to talk about today. Um, I will geek out with any of you anytime about GPUs and PC builds. I promise. But today we're going to talk about um, enterprise AI. 
and what that looks like. And one of the reasons I wanted to bring Mike in, especially after what happened last week at GTC and what was announced, and finally we can talk about this solution that we, uh, we had out there. Um, Mike, let's start with that. What was the announcement and give us the sort of translation of what it means in what it, what, how it, what it, how it impacts real users. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mentioned rag, right. A retrieval augmented generation. So there's, there's really two different ways to do rag today. One of the, one of the ways is you can use a hosted API like the open AI API or, or the Azure open AI API or the, Google's Gemini API, there's there's a bunch of these APIs out there, right? The, all the three major clouds each have their offerings, and then there's there's uh, uh, other third-party offerings out there. So it's- Well, you can build the worker plugins that then, that you can, can use your data, your input, but you're still gonna be putting it and in, in processing it on their backend. Exactly, yeah. So you can use their API, you can upload your data to it, uh, that'll populate a knowledge base on their end with access to your data. And then you, any queries to any chatbot you build or any API you stand up in front of that is going to have access to your data. But you already mentioned kind of the, the, the challenge there. You have to send your data to this third party API. And that's, that's, that's okay for certain use cases for certain types of data. It's, you know, it's an easy way to stand this up. So for something like, you know, we demonstrated something at Insight where we use the OpenAI API. Uh, one of our colleagues built a, an app application called DocBot that used the OpenAI API, augmented it with our product documentation. And now you've got like a chat GPT that knows NetApp products. And it, it was the perfect solution for that type of thing, right? Because product yeah. documentation's already public. It's public, it's a, yeah. Yeah, it's easy. You don't have to host all these GPUs in your own data center and deal with everything that, that comes along with that. But um, let's say we wanted to build a chatbot that had access to an internal code base, like let's say the internal ONTAP code base to assist our internal engineers. Uh, we wouldn't want to send the internal on tap code base to the open AI API, right? No. That's, that's, uh, that's our secret sauce right there. And, and it's, uh, very important, not just for us, but also for our customers who rely on on tap to be secure, that we keep that under lock and key. Right. And so. The other option for implementing RAG is you basically take one of these open source models that we were talking about right. um, and you you deploy it locally in your own environment with the framework. Llama Index is a popular framework. Olama is another one. On top of it for orchestrating your, your chat queries and basically orchestrating the pull from the, the knowledge base, you... Uh, and so you host that locally alongside a vector database where you essentially you use an embeddings model. Uh, and I know this is a lot of terminology here, so feel free to stop me. But you use an embeddings model to save embeddings of your, your data. So if we're talking an internal code base, you would save a bunch of embeddings that are, you know, this is outside of my realm of expertise, but they're essentially like, big long vectors that represent the data or represent the important content in the data. And then your RAG framework is going to, each time there's a chat query, it's going to say, okay, what data in this knowledge base, what vectors are related to this chat query? It's going to pull those back and then it's going to go to the LLM and say, okay, here's the query and here's a bunch of information from the knowledge base. What's your response? And yeah. now that the, the LLM, that that all happens under the hood. It's transparent to the user and the chat bot. But that that uh now the LLM knows more than the information it was trained on. It has access to some of your your internal data. So that's the that's the other method for deploying RAG, and that's for obvious reasons been the one that most enterprises, basically any enterprise with sensitive uh, data sets, 
that that's been the one generating the most interest and up until last week basically it was it was a heavy lift to implement yeah. that you had to take all these open source pieces frameworks tools that are uh, varying degrees of production ready and yeah. and kind of piece them all together and build something around it and hope for the best <laughs> and hope that it worked yeah, yeah. and it so it yeah it was I've played around with them. They're cool tools. You can make it work, but it's a, it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of overhead there and a lot of support that's needed from, from the engineers that work on it and then, and then support it. Uh, and so what, what well, NVIDIA let you, now, let me jump in and ask yeah. you a quick question real yeah. quick. So for, as someone who's done storage management for a couple of decades now, like we've, we, there's been this sort of evolution and growth of, uh, functionality around metadata and we've been able to do tagging categorization even just folder structure mapping and things like that there's some light intelligence that can be built into built around that uh, from an inference perspective um, but based on what's in the in the folder structure you can sort of build a category stack out of that so we've got these piles of metadata that have been laying around and when the fact that we could search with them and start using filters and sorting mechanisms, but all of it felt very manual um, in, in that it, you had to flip switches and, and all of this stuff in order to get a result that you wanted. Where was the revolutionary step that allowed us to just start talking to a, a text-based chat interface? Or even some of them are even doing voice chat now. Yeah. But where was where was that pivot point that happened that took the way of doing it with tags and categorization around metadata to having uh, some sort of service bot that would go out and just do all of that work for you and spit out regular language, uh, conversational language? Yeah, so the it was LLMs that made it possible, these large language models. But the the first uh Basically, the first use case to popularize it was ChatGPT. So yeah. that was the revolution. That was when everybody's light bulb went off and they said, oh, this is big. So, that, yeah, now we can, we've, you know, these large language models had been around for a few years. ChatGPT was based on GPT-3. But this was the first time people could go in and talk to it in a super easy, approachable way. And that was kind of when everybody said, this is going to, change everything and you know quickly from there it went to okay how can we deploy this in our enterprise with with our private data and a knowledge base augment it with our private data and and thus rag became the the next big thing and, and to put this in perspective i vividly remember this because i spent my long holiday break over christmas uh playing with it guys this too. was yeah. this was Third, fourth, eh, December of 2022. So it's not even been 18 months. Yeah. It, yeah. That's how quick this has all happened in, in the last 18 months. And th as, as typically the enterprise does not is not known for its speed of adoption of new technologies. So just in the last 18 months, less than 18 months, we've seen the emergence of chat GPT. We've seen, I think, I think we had Hopper at that point. Um, uh, I think it was that fall of 2022. I think, I think, yeah, I believe that's right. But I believe GPT, GPT three definitely wasn't trained on Hopper. I think GPT four was trained on Ampere. Don't, don't wow. quote me on that. But so, okay. yeah, it's we haven't even seen the tip of the iceberg yet. And yeah. so that's the the I, exactly, and that's the point I'm trying to make is that yes, as big as GTC was last week, we are. It's the sliver of the end of the fingernail of what we're going to see over the course of the next three to five years. Uh, look at what has transpired just in the last 12 months. It has been nothing short of atomic um, and, and taking over every conversation in the industry. And it's something that fortunately we've been a part of and partnered with NVIDIA for since I think at least 2016, if not a year before that. Um, doing the ONTAP AI solutions and the DGX Converge solutions that we had around there. Um, but now we've we've announced last week as well, we've got AIPod, the next evolution of that, um, that's going to be based, I believe, on the Blackwell platform. 
Um, we've we've got certifications around that stuff as well, and some of the stuff that you're here to show and demo today uh, around RAG and our validation around that solution. Yeah, yeah. So the yeah we announced the AI pod. That's the evolution of of ONTAP AI. My colleague Dave Arnett is the the father of that, but he. Yeah, and I, it's initially going to be based on Hopper, but Blackwell's obviously the gotcha. next thing down the down the line. As soon as we can get them, right? Because yeah. I, I can't imagine the demand that's uh, that's on right now for those things. Yeah, it's hard to even. What did get he? Hopper. He said on stage he was holding one of them, and he says this is ten billion dollars. Yeah, and I was I, like, oh, God, what? It's still, it's still hard to even get Hopper. I mean, they can't. Yeah, they can't make these things fast enough. It's crazy. It's. It's uh, but yeah. Anyway, so I, I, I may have lost track of the question, but yeah, we. So we also announced. I, I touched on Rag, right? And we, we also announced last week alongside Nvidia. So I'd mentioned the complications around deploying Rag internally up to this point. Well, Nvidia announced last week the Nvidia Nemo microservices, which are part of their Nvidia AI Enterprise package or subscription. And it's essentially a, a package for implementing RAG in an enterprise with enterprise support from NVIDIA. And uh, there was a lot of talk about NIM in Jensen's keynote and a lot of the GTC sessions. NIM stands for the NEMO inference microservice. So that's a piece of these, these NEMO microservices. There's two big pieces. There's NIM and then there's the NEMO retriever microservice, which is basically their rag framework so got it N nim is how you host your your llm internally and then nemo retriever is how you augment it with your your private data how you implement rag so they they announced that and we announced that we had essentially validated that working hand in hand alongside them running on on tap storage but not just running on ONTAP storage, we also validated it ingesting data from existing NetApp uh, file and object data sources to build out that knowledge base. So would you and, would you refer to that as training? So you would take their out of the box solution as a default state and then train it with the existing stuff? So technically we're still doing inference. So RAG, okay. is, RAG is all inference. So if fine tuning if you've if you've heard the term fine tuning that would that's more on the training side so fine tuning is when you take a one of these base models like the llama tube models and you you basically just adjust the last few layers of it by gotcha. training it on your own data so that's on the training side that's a more intensive thing cuz you have to you have to have the infrastructure to run that kind of training job rag is it all it all happens on the inference side. So RAG basically you just you're augmenting the the uh, inference query with your private data, with your your internal data. So what we did is is fill out the knowledge base, that RAG knowledge base, the vector database that's being used for inference with some existing data from existing NetApp data sources. So it's this can all happen programmatically. It's all API driven. So so a customer of ours could take their existing NetApp volumes and buckets and just, you know, quickly run a little script that takes the files and objects that are on those, sends them to the embedding service and saves them in this RAG knowledge base. And then they've got a, a NVIDIA chatbot that they can talk to and say, uh, you know, ask questions to, and it's going to have access to that. How do I cable data. up my shelf to a FAS 2850, whatever, right? Ex exactly. Or maybe yeah. it's your, your internal KBs or maybe your Perforce code base that's stored on NetApp, anything really. Yeah. So it's, you've essentially, we, we validated two things. We validated all of this running on NetApp. So your, your vector DB, your knowledge base is protected by all of the NetApp goodness that we all know and love. All the snapshots. flex and snap words, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did snap mirror for DR, snapshots, all that good stuff. And uh, uh, But we've also kind of added value to the existing NetApp data by showing how it can be 
utilized in this this knowledge base uh, with uh, in the in the rag basically in the the rag paradigm so you brought some toys with you today is it uh, should we pull those up and go over some of those yeah maybe now's a good time to to go ahead and show that demo so we've got a, okay. a short little demo video that shows the solution that i've been describing here if you saw our our uh, blog we put out on the community site last week you may have already seen this but all right so it's about two minutes guys we're going to play this um uh, mike if there's any point you want to stop and go over something just say pause real quick and i'll uh i'll we can stop and do some color commentary sounds good cool all right here we go hey folks mike oglesby here from netapp and i'm going to show you how netapp and nvidia have partnered to help you unlock your data for secure private generative ai this solution is powered by NVIDIA NEMO Retriever, an enterprise-ready retrieval augmented generation framework, and by NetApp, with the ability to ingest from your existing NetApp data sources and NetApp's enterprise data protection and governance built in. And the best part, this entire stack can run both on-premises and in any of the major clouds. First, I'm going to perform a chat query with Retrieval Augmented Generation, or RAG, turned off. So, did that work? All right, I paused it. So the, oh, uh, nice. Okay. Yeah. It, so what, we're, what I'm doing here, just to add some additional color, is I have deployed the Nemo microservices, but I have not yet uploaded anything to the RAG knowledge base. So I'm... I'm using here a Llama 2 7 billion parameter model, which is the smallest of the open source Llama 2 models. Uh, and I, I'll, I'll, you need some pretty, you need a lot of GPU memory to host these LLMs. So depending on how much memory you have, you can, you may be somewhat limited in what size of LLM you can use, but the the nice thing about RAG is when you augment it with your knowledge, you can kind of tune it to give you quality answers, even if you're using one on the, the smaller side. But so I'm using the smallest Llama 2 model here. I'm not using my knowledge base. I haven't uploaded any data yet. So we're going to ask it a question and, and see what it knows. So quick so question like based on that. Chat like, yeah. Um, when you say it, you need a bunch of memory in the GPUs, is it loading the entire model into memory? For, for it is response? yeah okay so for llm inference you have to have the entire model loaded into memory so if you it, you know when we're talking things so these llms are big right i i'm not remembering exact numbers but i think the the 13 billion parameter model is over 50 gigabytes so, to, so i can uh, tell you that i recently downloaded the rtx chat as i said at the beginning that was a 100 gig download, and the model itself, I believe, was around 90 gigs. Yeah, it, it was it was massive, and I ended up having to get rid of it because I don't I don't have that big of a, of an SSD that to, so I, I'd have to upgrade my system to be able to host it uh, locally like that. Yeah, these things are are no joke. It, it, so yeah, the the advantage of Hopper and now especially Blackwell for these use cases is they have a lot of memory. So yeah. you can, you, know, you can fit the entire model into less GPUs. Basically, if it doesn't fit on one GPU, you have to split it across multiple GPUs and kind of feed your query to it in, in parallel, split it up and, and run pieces of it in parallel. Tensor parallelism is the technical term. Gotcha. It's, yeah, basically here I was running the, the 7 billion parameter Llama 2 model across two Ampere GPUs. Gotcha. So I'm going to ask it a question. Remember, no, we haven't uploaded anything to the knowledge base yet, and we'll we'll see what it knows. Uh, to tell me about AI Pod from NetApp, and you'll see the answer is pretty far off base. So I have to pause again. This is a pretty hilarious answer. So if you, <laughs> you ask the 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 open source seven billion parameter Llama two model. What is AI Pod from NetApp? And it starts talking about how AI Pod isn't a product or service offered by either Apple, the company behind the iPod, or NetApp. And it's it's important to note that 
both have unique offerings and expertise <laughs> and would be unlikely to collaborate on a, a product. So yeah, it, it has no idea what AI pod from NetApp is. Right. It thinks it's some kind of fancy music de listening device. Yeah, I, I asked this. I actually asked this question two different ways when I was working on recording this demo, and one time it went with iPod, the other time it went with AirPod. So it, <laughs> but Apple was a consistent theme there. All right, I'll I'll go ahead and roll the rest of the video. Now I'm going to add some information on AIPod to my RAG knowledge base. So I go over to the Knowledge Base tab here, and I click on Add File, and I'm going to add a file that contains some information on AIPod. Okay. So just a, a quick note, NVIDIA, this package provides two ways to upload embeddings to your Knowledge Base. One is to just upload a file through the UI here, and it'll create the embeddings, save them in the, the vector DB that backs the, the Knowledge Base. The other way is to use the API. And when we're talking whole NetApp volumes or buckets worth of data, the API is going to be the way to go. And I'll, I'll show that as we get further along in the well, video. It's a good time to answer this question from Aviv. Hey, Aviv uh, from Israel. Uh, can it scrape or embed any data type into the vector DB, or are there specific limitations around uh, what can be ingested? So for here, you're upgrading, you're uploading a text file. Are there specific endpoints or file extensions, or can you can you put a whole database in here? Like, what are the limitations around what can be uploaded? I am I'm certain there are limitations. I don't know them off the the top of my head, but there's there's just no feasible way it could support anything. I know I know they do have support for structured data. You can connect it to a database, so that's an option. Um, is and that then they, old school ODBC connections or like how is that is that pulling it in over like API external API uh, excuse me extensible APIs? Or? Yeah, I'm not sure. I I need to dig into the documentation. We we haven't played around much with that piece of it yet. We've mostly been playing with unstructured data. So on the unstructured data side, I know it it's not just limited to plain text files. It supports PDFs mm. for sure. Which Can is you a, point it at a UNC path or an NFS mount point, a junction path, something like that, and it just goes and figures figures it all out? Yeah, so that's what we're going to show in the nice. next, uh, as we get further along here. So my colleague Prabhu put together a script that basically just, you give it a, a NFS share and it just goes through and uploads everything. Nice. So it... And uh, I know for a fact, like I said, it supports PDF, which is a popular one for knowledge bases, KBs, that kind of thing. You can export those. And it supports anything text. So anything text is going to be easy. Uh, but the yeah, I'd have to dig into the Nemo docs to give you a exact answer there. This would all be in the, the Nemo Retriever documentation from NVIDIA. Got it. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's keep rolling. So I've uploaded this file now, this text file, which is is basically just a bunch of product information about AIPod that I dumped into text. Uh, and now I'm going to turn on my knowledge base, and and so we'll have RAG essentially turned on. We'll be augmenting our queries with the knowledge base, and we'll we'll see if it if it does better with our AIPod question. That file has been added. Now we're going to perform a chat query with RAG turned on. So we go back to our chatbot UI. We check the use knowledge base checkbox. We'll click on show context. And then we'll ask the same question and click submit. Uh, and you'll see this time the chatbot gives us a very... Hmm. So I'll, pa I'll pause it there. Now it knows about AIPod, right? So it... It knows that it's a solution from NetApp, which combines the NVIDIA DGX H100, Mellanox high-performance Ethernet switches, and cloud-connected all-flash storage to provide a comprehensive platform for artificial intelligent workloads in a scalable manner. So that text file that you uploaded, is it formatted like that with some YAML-style formatting, or is it interpreting that and, and, and ingesting it that way? So it is interpreting it 
that way. So basically, okay. I that text file I uploaded, I literally went and like copy pasted the white paper on AI Pod and dumped it into a text file. Gotcha. And, and uploaded it. So you'll you'll see over on the the right under uh, context, it's citing its source there. Oh but yeah. The, okay. Yeah, the word. So it's showing where it it got this from, and that score of point. 71 means it's pretty sure it's right. The higher that is, the more. Is that like a 70th percentile kind of? Is that the way the way to read that? Yeah, that's my understanding of it. So it's it's a uh, I you know this is all more on the data that that piece is more on the data science side, and I'll warn everybody I know enough about data science to be dangerous. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm more I live more in the AI orchestration ML ops world, but yeah, that's my understanding of it. Um, if someone else, if I'm wrong and someone knows, feel free to correct me in the, in the chat, but it, so basically it's, it's pretty sure about it. It's pretty sure that's the, the right answer there. Aviv, and, uh, threw another question real quick. Uh, can yeah. we, we have controls over the embedding settings. Yeah. There are a lot of parameters that can be tuned. So it's, there's kind of a default deployment that uses an NVIDIA embedding model. But they, there's a lot of ways you can customize it. When you deploy it, there's a basically you deploy the NVIDIA RAG enterprise LLM operator, and then you you create what's called a RAG, and this is on Kubernetes, obviously, and you create what's what's called a RAG pipeline object using that operator. And there's a whole bunch of things you can you can, there's a whole bunch of configs you can set when you do that. So different parameters for the Nemo Retriever embedding service. Uh, you can even use, I believe, different embedding models aside from the default NVIDIA one. So there, yeah, there's a there's a lot of knobs you can you can turn there. Fantastic, good question, Aviv. Yeah, the the cool thing about it is is it you can either use NVIDIA's default deployment where it just works, where you you know you just run kubectl apply and then it works or you can tune it to your heart's content so quick side note i love that you're also a cube cuddle guy you like to cuddle your cubes oh yes yeah what's the official pronunciation right that's what i say yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what the that's what the uh the cncf guys say so that's what i went with yeah, yeah. <laughs> the people that get all up in arms about it it's cube control it's cube ctl yeah. no it's not it's you have to cuddle your cubes yeah, the the CNCF guys say coop cuddle. It's like Jif. All right. All right. So the uh, we had a we had a good. You're gonna answer. start a holy war. Don't do that. <laughs> I had to go there. I had to go there. All right. The uh, so we this time it gave a good answer. It knew what it was talking about. And to Nick's question, the the wording is all that's all the large language model there. Okay. Where is that being stored when you upload the text file uh, and it gets interpreted into this? Is this a live reading of that text file or is it getting formatted in this way and placed into some sort of live NoSQL? Or like what, what happens when you upload that text it, file? So when you upload the text file, it gets passed into the embedding model, which is... A smaller model than the LLM, but basically it's a model that takes the text, extracts the meaning from it, and saves it as vectorized embeddings in the vector okay. database. So sequences of numbers, basically. So it is it is yeah. doing something with the text. It's not live reading the text when you query. It's okay. That's what yeah, I was trying when, to figure out. When you query the the retriever service is going to so I type in a query here, right? This is going to go, the chatbot's then going to go hit an API. And then the retriever service is going to go and pull, it's going to search the vector database for any embeddings that seem similar to the query. And then it's going to get those back. And then it's going to go to the LLM and say, hey, LLM, here's our inference query. And it's going to say, okay, here's what, here's the question. The query and here's some other information for your consideration basically gotcha and then the llm will spit out an answer gotcha so it's it's uh that's cool it's 
it's actually pretty crazy how crude a lot of this stuff is <laughs> for lack of a better word how and how well it works given how how crude it is it kind of you know it it makes me wonder what kind of super crazy stuff we're going to see over the next five years as people build this out further well I look at this it looks like some kind of template out of you know uh geo cities or something as a website <laughs> as just a portal right but i but i i think of it from in the context of you're probably not going to use this directly you're going to um embed it somewhere in a existing corporate portal that's secured and you're going to access it remotely anyway this is more like it says the playground uh for testing and um inferencing and things like that uploading your knowledge base and it's the back end tool it's not the front end that the users are going to see yeah exactly so this is this llm playground is included with the nemo microservices but you're exactly right it's meant as a a way to just kind of play around with this stuff just see how it works the what most customers are going to do is exactly what you described you they're going to use the api yeah. and they're going to embed this in maybe a an intranet site or you know a kb know. portal you know yeah. or some kind of knowledge base search engine if you will um yeah ex exactly like our our uh doc bot that one of our colleagues developed that's like a little thing that pops up from the bottom right on on a documentation site so it's right. something like that uh, i know service now is also yeah, I went to one of their sessions at GTC just as an aside. They're building some interesting capabilities around LLMs where you can incorporate them into ServiceNow in certain ways. That's something else that's that's happening and generating a, a lot of interest. Nice. All right, so All right. We've, we've uploaded our text file. We've corrected the response. Where do we go from here? Yeah, so the next thing I'm going to show is the the kind of that programmatic upload we talked about of the entire contents of a NetApp volume. So this is using that script that my my colleague Prabhu put together. And just to tell you how easy it is, he put this thing together in like maybe an hour. So it just, yeah, yeah it's, it's a pretty straightforward API that NVIDIA provides. And then you can just upload anything, basically. Damn. Good answer, and it cites the source from our knowledge base. And this solution can scale far beyond a one file knowledge base. With Nemo Retriever, we can programmatically ingest private data from across on-prem and multiple clouds. Uh, and here you see a script that's ingesting the entire contents of a NetApp volume. And now we're going to perform a chat query with RAG turned on using the so what we did there is Prabhu script went through a NetApp volume that had a, basically we went to our doc site and we exported the whole thing as PDF. And that, yeah, it's showing a few over there on the, the side, but uh, we had more uh, for our final test. But yeah, basically it's, it, we exported a bunch of docs as PDF and saved those to a volume. And then he wrote a script that just went through that whole volume and called the retriever API and saved those as saved vectorized embedding representations of those. So, you don't, it, right. Yeah. You don't save. I, a full I love copy. that we're just uploading yeah. PDF, but then the contents of the PDF are ingested, indexed, uh, inferenced and everything is being available to it. So it's not just the file, which traditionally we would have to tag and categorize and do all of that stuff because we deal with files at the store on the storage side it's taking that the contents of the file uh, almost in an ocr kind of context and and then applying tags metadata all that stuff to the contents of the file i i think that's really a differentiator for me that um i'm really starting to get my head around and understand with with some of this stuff that we're now we've, we're now just dipping a layer a layer below where we were at the file level and just seeing this just uploading files and telling it to go and process those files and now because it, it now it now i'm going to be able to ask it how to uh how to uh, uh 
you know, NetApp GPT, how do I, or DocBot, how do I expand my Kubernetes cluster using Spot Ocean? Exactly. Yeah. And it'll just give me some instructions. Yeah. Or if, you know, if there was an internal chat bot that had access to like a bunch of internal engineering documentation, let's say internal ONTAP engineering documentation, like a, a new engineer who had the, you know, that you would want it all to be access controlled properly, of course, but a new engineer could come in an engineer on the architecture team and say, Hey, help me understand the architecture of ONTAP. And it would, it would have access to everything. It would be able to summarize it. And, and, you know, the nice thing about these, these LLMs is you can kind of, you can go back and forth with them. So you can ask them to rephrase things, to expand on things. I mean, I'm sure everybody here has played with chat GPT and experienced that, but it's not just like a one-time question answer. It's, you can you can go deep with it and when it has access to all this internal stuff you can kind of direct it where you you want it to go which um as another aside kind of hits on one of the other themes from gtc last week which is prompt engineering as good as mm. these things are you do have to kind of tailor your prompts to get the answer you want well, I remember I was I, one of my I, my annual update videos or future forward kind of videos that I do. I, I, I think it was the 2023 and beyond video where I said, I think there's going to be this new job role that gets created. And I think I, at the time I called it because we had data scientists and data engineers. And I think I um, I think I called it information engineer. But yeah, prompt engineering I think is going to be a thing. I think there are going to be, there's going to be a specialty and if there's not already around people that know how to interact with artificial intelligence at, at a prompt level, how to keyword it, how to interact with it, how to make it respond, how to make it correct itself. Um, I've seen things where people can tell it to check its work and it finds its own mistakes and corrects them. Like that is all part of this prompt engineering side of, of the world that, I don't think existed until within the last year. Yeah, for sure. And there's the, you know, kind of what's, in, what's interesting is there's two different types of prompt engineering that have emerged. So there's, there's what you described, which is super important and huge where the, you know, that's going to be important. You're going to have to have users who know how to engineer prompts to get the information they need from, from the AI, but then there's also a level of prompt engineering that kind of happens under the hood uh, when you're hosting your own model like this. So like as part of the, the Nemo inference microservice or NIM, there's a essentially a default prompt that you set. And so you can edit that. So you can, you can, hmm. I should say prompt template. So you can, you can basically, what the user types in is not what exactly what gets Pass to the LLM. What the user types in gets inserted into a template that might say some other stuff like, you are an expert on such and such. You right. have access to all this information. You are being, you are chatting with an internal engineer. And so it gives the LLM a bunch of context that the user doesn't necessarily have to type into the, 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 the query you know, the end that's how I talk query. to chat GPT now, because I've learned I've, I've yeah. studied enough to, and people that there are plenty of people out there, whether it's creators, influencers, people that are playing with this stuff all day, every day, teaching people and me how to, how to prompt properly. And I, that's, yeah, I, any, depending on if I'm writing, you are a senior editor, uh, cry, gr critique this blog post. You know, I, I definitely include a lot of that stuff, but it's you're saying that under the covers, that's pre-programmed for anything that anybody puts in in the Nemo stuff. Yeah. So if let's say you're deploying a, a chat bot that's specifically for maybe the IT help desk, right? Okay. And it's got access to all the internal I, IT KBs. You can you can set up the prompt template such that the end user doesn't have to do, you know, tell it that every time you can have the template say, okay, you support 
IT support engineers, your second level support or something like that. Right. And so, so there's, then there's a little less prompt engineering that has to happen on the, the user side it, because you've augmented the prompt with this template. So there's the data scientists who are deploying these models are actually doing a certain amount of prompt engineering at that level. And then there's the, the end user prompt gotcha. engineering, which is interesting. The whole thing's like magic, basically. Gotcha. All right, so we've uploaded a bunch of files using, uh, is this a, what is he, is this a Jupyter notebook or what is he, I don't know what the logo is in the top left. What is that? So I, it's a Jupyter Lab interface, but it's yeah. just a Python script. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, we're, we're using the Nemo Retriever Python SDK and, and Probu gotcha. put together a script. So. And we're just running that in the, the Jupyter Lab interface. So I'll go ahead and roll the rest of the video. Now that we've uploaded these files, I'm going to ask it a, a question and uh, see what it knows. Okay. And now we're going to perform a chat query with RAG turned on using the knowledge base that was created by that ingest script. So I'm going to ask it about autonomous ransomware protection from NetApp and, and uh, Keep, remember that what that script uploaded was all of our product, all, basically our docs site. So, so it would not have known about this. I believe the cutoff for the Llama 2 models were sometime in 2022. Yeah. But with, with the content from our, our doc site, it should be able to come up with a good answer. Uh, and you'll see we get a very good answer here to our query. And on the right, it's citing sources from our knowledge base. Very nice. All right. So that is, that is first of all, that's really cool. Um, I can't wait to see how people deploy that in their own business uh, and in their own enterprises. And I think we're going to see a lot of new creative ways that this kind of stuff is used in the enterprise that we wouldn't have even thought of. Which is often the case. Being the, being the fun back-end storage provider that we are, yes, we try to cover scenarios and we do a lot with solutions and we try to think of every, you know, using Microsoft SQL to host this app, using NetApp Storage, and we try to figure out all these combinations and write documentation and best practices around all of them. Um, I'm anxious to see what are the things we're not thinking of. What are the things that people are going to cook up using these tools from both NVIDIA, NetApp, and beyond um, to, to do some of the really cool, innovative stuff um, now that they have the ability to do this. What can they provide to their end users, to consumers, potentially, on the front end with this kind of powerful technology behind the scenes? I'm, that's the thing I'm most excited about looking five years out. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think if there's one thing I've learned in, in the... Uh, working in the AI space for for five years now, it's it's that I you know the cu the customers lead us to the solutions. So you know we put together these pieces with Nvidia technologies, but our customers think of use cases that we can't even dream up. You know, and they we, typically start with conversations like, "Hey, you know what would be cool is if I could do X Y Z with ABC," and you and you kind of go, "We never even thought about that." Okay, yeah, we can build that. Yeah, that, that's ninety nine percent of the time how it goes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think that's how I think that's how the doc the doc bot that we were talking about originated, and I think there's a couple other internal rag apps we have here at NetApp that originated in the same way. Someone said, "Don't you think this would be cool?" And then, oh, let's go do it. So yeah, uh, it's. I look forward to um, what is what's the name of Elon's robot Tesla's new robot that they're doing Olympus not Olympus. Um, Optimus, I think is what it is. I can't wait till we have Optimus in data centers cabling up MPHA on storage systems, storage <laughs> clusters. Like we're not that far off, guys. No. Like realistically, we could, that's within 5 years we could we could have that. You could have unattended data center rack and stacks. Yeah, it's I think you know, at the pace this stuff is going and given how crude a lot of it is now and how well it works in spite of that, it's I I think the world we're not going to recognize the world five, ten years from now. No, I, I look at 2030, five, six years out, and I'm going, this is going to be insane. Like, it's yeah. going to be unrecognizable the way that we, that we do life. Now, hopefully, 
it's a little more Wall-E and a little less Terminator. But I, I, I don't know where all of this is ultimately going to end up. I don't know if it will go to those kinds of places in our lifetimes. But there certainly is the risk for it. I'm glad to see that that's being taken seriously out in the industry. Um, I'm definitely excited to see what businesses, um, how they engineer the information, they, the data that they have over their entire legacy. Hopefully you kept it all. And now you can train it, right, to be able to do to turn all of that data into information that's accessible by your end users or your internal teams and training and stuff like that. Like I see this mad rush to go and re pull all your tapes back out of out of storage, <laughs> out from under the mountain to be able to plug them back in to train and and use for inferencing for some of these models, um, for internal use cases and just have that kind of legacy. I mean, look at NetApp, founded in ninety two. We've got data back to ninety two, thirty years, thirty plus years of data at this point. So I'm I'm looking at that going. Do we want to train on that entire legacy? Do we do I want a chat bot to be able to tell me the thirty year story of NetApp? Bank go and does it that's possible and while that might not be useful to anybody other than like copywriters and marketing folks um that kind of stuff is useful for any company to help build copy for websites to help build press releases to help build all the stuff that they do on a daily basis um having that sort of history and legacy of stuff um so i look at this in there are so many ways that this, this could be leveraged across all the different business units of any company. Not just documentation, not just code, not just hardware rack and stacks, everything. It comes across the board as everything. Yeah, I think, you know, to this point, it's been easier to extract value from structured data, right? Now, yeah. but there's so much more unstructured data out there. And now, you know, this is all... You know, you can do this with unstructured data and it's, I think we're just scratching the surface. Yeah. Two, two years ago, I did a thing for AWS, uh, one of their AWS summits. And two years ago, I, there was data to support that 60% of the world's data was unstructured. I'm surprised it's not higher. Yeah. So uh, there's the fact that we can now go in and like we can ingest PDFs, spreadsheets, you know, all of that stuff and, and access the data, the content that's inside of those and not just rely on tagging files themselves. Like that's huge. That's going to be a yeah. huge deal. Yeah, it's a well, Mike, any, uh, any closing thoughts? I don't see any lingering questions hanging out there. Thank you, uh, Avi for throwing some in. Um, but anything you want to leave the folks with anything else that I know you brought some slides too, but we don't really need those to, unless there's something to show. No, I think the, the demo was the, was the main event and the yeah the slides were just showing some architectures i think we we talked through it all but yeah if uh um you know i enjoyed this and and if anybody's interested in learning more just reach out to anybody at netapp basically and they'll connect you with the right person if you want to connect with me the only social i do is linkedin feel free in to discord you're in discord too i am on the discord yeah we so don't call that a social media yeah, network yeah. though if you're so, if you're in the Discord, feel free to hunt me down there. Uh, yeah. There's an artificial intelligence channel, and if I'm if I'm too busy and ignoring it, Nick will hunt me down. And, I'll ping him. And, yeah. <laughs> so so yeah, feel free to reach out through through either of those avenues uh, if you have any questions or if you want to talk about this further. Yeah. Thanks for being a part of that uh, that movement to build our community up and and be accessible. And, and to allow people to have access to you in that way, that medium. Um, it's been really beneficial across the board, not only for a lot of our open source solutions that we used to do under the pub, but a lot of other stuff that um, we're seeing just around AFF, E-Series, you know, on tap, all of that stuff. It's, 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 there's a place for everything in there, guys. So uh, we have discussion groups. We have, that. We, Mike said, we do have an artificial intelligence channel. It's fairly new. Um, we have a few people that from our side that are in there. I'm working on getting some folks from NVIDIA and potentially some of the other. Um, I've met one of the people from the Llama group, and I want to see if we can start getting some of these other people in here to really start collaborating and build the, this community a little bit around some of these solutions that we could really build and, and put together. So um, thanks so much for being a part of this, Mike, um, and um, coming on and talking us through the demo. I'm very, I know you got, you're exhausted, man. Go, go sleep for three <laughs> days after last week, but... 
I, I, I think again, I'll just, I'll just re reiterate again, the sliver of the fingernail. We were just on the tip uh, of what's po what's going to be possible in a few years with this kind of stuff. And I think we're every day we learn something new. Every year there's a new chip. Every month there's a new solution that comes out. Um, every day almost I see a new TikTok of some new .ai website thing that does a thing. I can't keep up anymore. It's bigger than the CNCF at this point. Um, as far as the number of apps and integrations and stuff like, um, keep an eye on Zapier. They're doing some really cool stuff. They're the way that they're tying stuff. They're no code solutions that they do. Um, I, those are the things that really, I, that consume me on a day to day basis is just trying my best to keep up with this avalanche that is barreling down the hill at all of us at a thousand miles an hour, um, and hanging on tight to whatever we can, um, and enjoy the ride. But that's what this is, guys. Enjoy the ride, because uh, <laughs> it's just just hang on tight because it's it's just getting started. Yeah, it's fun to be a part of. All right, well, Mike, thank you so much for joining. I got a few closing thoughts and uh, and words, but um, anything else you want to leave the the group with? Nope, that's all I have. Enjoyed awesome. it. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Have a good one, man. You too. All right, guys, there you go. Thanks again to uh, my colleague, Mike. He's our senior TME for all AI solutions. Really appreciate him coming on, uh, and I really enjoy that. Um, as I said before, come join us in Discord. It's the place to be. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Follow us on uh, Twitch. Uh, you can also follow me at Data Center Dude over on TikTok, uh, and the NetApp TikTok is over there now, pending they don't ban it. Well, to be determined if we figure that out or not. But I've got a bunch of videos over there uh, on TikTok as well. You can come follow my YouTube channel if you like as well. Just search for Data Center Dude. You'll find me. Um, and then uh, what else we got? LinkedIn. You can follow us on LinkedIn if you want some more of the, some of the corporate stuff. That's over there as well. Uh, but yeah, follow us anywhere you find us. We're trying our best to make sure that we are where you want to be. All those things. Uh, and make sure you follow us here on NetApp on Air. We've got a lot of, we've got an exciting year planned. Uh, so make sure you come and uh, follow us anywhere you want to watch us. We'll be there. But guys, I'm Nick Howell. Thanks so much for joining us today, and we'll see you guys next time.